Hi everyone, this is Freddie with Superbike Unlimited and today we're gonna to be doing another update on the 2021 ZX10RR Superbike project. And uh, today we're gonna to be installing some go fast parts, uh, starting with our Aero World Superbike Specification Exhaust. Um, this is a system that we really enjoyed on our previous generation ZX10. And so it was just an obvious choice to start off with on this new platform. So right away, we're just gonna show you some things. Right now, it's all still wrapped up. So of course, we'll be opening this up in a moment. Um, but first, I wanna show you these bushings. These are the bushings that it comes with, which are, um, oh, actually, you know what? These are, this is the, the uh, SBK bushings that we got with this one. Interesting, I actually hadn't taken a close look at these, but the- uh, Yeah, because that's what these were before we trimmed them. Yeah, normally those actually don't come standard. What do you mean, like without this? Yeah, usually they're round. Oh, okay. yeah. So anyway, uh, this is actually not something that normally comes standard with this exhaust system. So um, I probably should have taken a closer look at this before starting to shoot this stuff. But typically when you order this system, it comes with a set of round bushings that go on the inside. So essentially you can see this is actually port matched. And actually this version is port matched to a super bike cylinder head. Very likely the KRT spec. It's a little bit different from what we have. And so the, the standard bushing or insert that goes in here, and this actually goes right up into the exhaust port on the cylinder head. We'll show you that in a moment. But the ones that normally will come with this system are perfectly round. So they don't have these the CNC shaped version that's essentially a port matched uh, set. What we do is um, we've modified these to, to suit our exhaust port. So you can see that it's a little bit different. This is a used set from our previous engine. We're just going to keep using these and they just go right up into here and you can kind of see what we've done there. You can see the little lip on the bottom that's designed to match this right here. So uh, we don't have this other one that uh, that you see on the, the arrow set that we got, which again is likely to do with something that KRT is doing on World Superbike. We just don't have that here. So right now this cylinder head is actually still stock anyway. So um, we're going to be installing this system and uh, then shortly thereafter, hopefully we're going to get the last little bit of hardware we need to wrap up our MoTeC install. And we'll be able to start doing some uh, mapping on the dyno. Okay, Tex is now um, wrapping up the collector and mid-pipe install. You can see over there he's using uh, one of those spring tools to get the each exhaust spring on. And so far it looks like our install is very similar to what we would have expected on the previous generation. Um, we do have a couple of clearance concerns. I think that we'll be able to resolve them, but uh, just some stuff that we'll go into in a bit. But we'll go ahead and show you this extremely beautiful and extremely loud silencer that we're about to put on here. This is, uh, really, we love these exhaust systems. You know, a few years ago, I'm not sure I would have been as big a fan of this thing because of the color, but it's really grown on me. I think it's a fantastic finish. It sounds brutal, frankly. It's very loud, uh, but it's, it really complements the engine, especially once we do our Superbike spec engine. It's just got a very nice, aggressive sound. And uh, I really like this one because they've laser etched the logo on previous ones. We've, I think we've always had a sticker there where this is like the fourth one of these style pipes and I think the third generation of this World Superbike exhaust. But this exhaust is uh, quite literally a World Superbike exhaust system. Um, the Pachetti racing team has used it on their ZX-10R and it's a really awesome system. You can see the design here. You can see there's a crossover from cylinders one to four and each one of these cylinders does have a Lambda sensor, which we plan to utilize on this build. And moving on, uh, you can see sort of what our, con our concern here is. We do have a little bit of contact here. This is something that we definitely don't want aside from the fact that it's not gonna do a great job of cooling that oil if it's resting in right against a, uh, a head pipe that's gonna be like over a thousand degrees. Um, it's also really bad to have metal on metal like this because uh, this the level of vibration that we're gonna be having out of this engine could do a lot of damage there. So we're gonna for sure have to resolve that. Long term, we're planning to upgrade this oil cooler and water cooler to something a lot more beefy. But uh, until we get that in, we're gonna have to sort this. So we'll probably just space it off or something because we have a ton of room on the other side here, which I'll show you now. So with that one in place, you can see we've got miles of room over here. So I'm sure we can come up with a way to, to resolve this that won't be too, too complicated. 
Okay, we're completing this exhaust install and things are coming along pretty smoothly. We've got the, uh, obviously we've installed our tail. I don't know if we're gonna keep using this exact tail um, or a, an updated version of this, but this is basically a special carbon fiber monocoque that's used on World Superbike. And uh, basically it, it serves as both subframe and bodywork. You can see it's essentially just a completely uh, hollow shell essentially but it is structural and um i see texas left out the uh some critical pieces so that's gonna have to come right back off but the uh there's supposed to be some subframe pieces that go behind this those are gonna go back on in a minute but the uh this is essentially a uh uh a super bike tail assembly that drops quite a bit of weight and and we just use it as a large storage unit Okay, so we're wrapping up this full system install. Everything's coming along pretty well. We still uh, got to do a few little finishing touches before Tex comes up with a solution for the cooler, but um, everything's going really smoothly. And actually, <clears throat> Tex commented that it's going on a little bit easier than our other one where we had some kind of mild clearance issues with regards to our SBK swing arm and uh, Lambda sensor making contact with the frame, which we had some solutions for that, but uh, it looks like we're not gonna have to use those, so that's a big plus. And we've also installed our Superbike monocoque tail section. This assembly doubles as not only a subframe, but also uh, bodywork, as you can see. So basically all that we're gonna add to this is just a seat unit that we have which we have a couple of different shapes and such. And inside, we uh, it's got plenty of room for our Superbike spec fuel tank. This is kind of like part of the, the support portion of it. And then uh, we have like a battery box here. And here in the back, you can also see we've got our rain light pre-installed here. So bike's coming along pretty well. We're probably not horribly far away from actually being able to fire this thing up and uh, do some tuning. Alrighty, so Tex has got now our cooler situation largely sorted out. It looks like we're going to be all all set here. He's basically just offset the uh, the oil cooler, and it's close but plenty of room, and certainly more than enough. And uh, we've sorted out some spacing just to keep this centered because they kind of mount alongside each other. And then what we've got going on here is these are our funnels that we ran on the old superbike we're going to mount these inside the airbox and test them but first we want to see how this airbox performs as it was delivered which is with no funnels whatsoever and tex has also uh completely wrapped this with our gold heat tape just to try to reduce any potential uh ambient temperatures from increasing intake air temp which could hurt horsepower and that's something that we also do in our fuel tanks just to try to keep the stability of the fuel at its maximum it's another day here at the shop and of course we are continuing the build and what we're going to show you now is we're starting to do some of our sensor installations something that's really cool about this system is with the use of our advanced electronic system via our motec m1 series ecus and uh, our motorsport spec wiring harness we are able to add a plethora of sensors that are otherwise not present on this platform gives us a lot of diagnostic ability about the engine, helps us make sure that we do things to keep this engine running optimally and safely. And uh, it's just a nice source of data. So, um, and, and in some cases it can actually be critical to the actual um, strategy in the ECU, specifically our M170, we were using a firmware that has an efficiency model fuel table. Um, and it actually looks at fuel pressure as a consideration for how fueling is built, you know, on a standard like alpha N style um, fuel table, which is probably what we're gonna be seeing more, you know, essentially what's in a pulse width type of deal that like what's in Moto America, um, it's not gonna be an issue. It's more, we use fuel pressure and stuff like that for diagnostic purposes, make sure the fuel pumps working the way it's supposed to, still really important. So we have here, this is gonna be our oil temperature. This is really great for just understanding, especially when we're on the dyno or at the racetrack that everything is within its operating temperature. Here we have oil pressure. And uh, again, this is uh, an engine health thing. You never, you know, if oil pressure is, uh, is low, that's really bad. So that's something that we're using primarily for engine health. And of course we've got Lambda. We have, over here, of course, we have not yet integrated these yet because we're gonna to have to modify our harness a bit, but you can see that we have all of our 
lambda inputs on the cylinders. I know I've touched on that a bit before, but that's something we're gonna be able to run four lambdas there, as well as a single lambda on the other side. Something else that we mention it regularly, but I just wanna bring it up because uh, people do often ask, but we also run suspension pots. Just to clarify exactly what that does, that measures suspension position at a very high rate uh, throughout the course of a lap or a race or whatever so that we can finally tune our suspension address any issues correct spring changes and so on and so forth um, we are also going to be running of course brake pressure front and rear there's our front and here's our rear and uh, that is actually something that you can just a lot of times use just to kind of make sure that from a rider perspective that things are being done the right way you can also use it to to some extent do some setup stuff but it, it's more to make sure that the rider is doing everything they need to do that there's not any big gaps between brake and throttle and um, it can help identify feedback and stuff like that and how much of it is the bike and how, how much of it is potentially rider input. Here we have our throttle bodies and we have this modified fuel rail that we've got our fuel pressure sensor on. So that is something that it's a little more difficult to integrate into this application just because you do have to make a weld on a really small piece but uh, this is exactly how we do that. We put this bung here and somebody uh, that was uh, a mechanic with a factory Kawasaki team that I consider a really good friend and a great guy is the guy that actually gave me that advice on how to do that trick. So that's uh, something that we think is really cool and we've been able to use that on a couple of different generations of the ZX-10 now. All right, so Tex has gotten our fairing stay and uh, gauge cluster mount. Um, this is actually a really cool piece that I'm hoping that we're still going to be able to use with our new bodywork. I have my doubts, but we'll just have to see. But this is actually a World Superbike component. This is exactly the same one used by the Factory World Superbike program. And uh, it's just been modified to accept our Motec C125 dash but, and uh, GB Racing case protector that we use for that. And... Um, few other little tweaks this is actually uh, I think this front piece is supposed to be like a camera mount we've put the tip over switch there and we've modified this quite a bit so that we can put the GPS up here and give it a good signal um, but that is uh, a really cool piece helps with power a bit it's got a very unique shape compared to standard as you can see and uh, so I'm hoping that if at the very least we can get one that is comparable to this to the new bodywork when the time comes also here you can see our uh, our controls. These are basically programmable by us, but typically what we have is going to be these buttons are for the dash. This is our run and start buttons. And then normally we will have these work as traction control up and down, a map switch, an engine braking switch, and um, a rain light switch. It just depends. We may We may switch that up. That's all fully programmable. Okay, what we've got going on right now is we are basically modifying our um, uh, harness to accept this new e-throttle and so essentially we're just doing these a few pins at a time this right here is the old drive-by-wire interface for uh, when i say old this is going to be 16 to 20 zx10r and of course new bikes got an e-throttle doesn't have this anymore so we're going to have to adapt that part of our harness so we don't have to build a completely new sub harness right here for the throttle body and what we're using is a professional motorsports grade crimping tool with a very specific adapter for the type of pin you're using seen here and uh that's just going to allow us to get a perfect crimp every time it, and it crimps it basically does a 360 degree crimp and you're going to notice that we are combining a couple of wires there it's because we don't need to have this many connections in our new plug so we're and we're going down from something that has eight connections and we actually were only using six to something that has four so two of these are basically the same you know basically we have a, a couple of uh, zero volt wires and a couple of five volt wires we're going to be able to combine those in a single pin on this new connector and that's what you see here we're beginning to complete the assembly and you can kind of see the way all of our motorsports wiring works on this. It's pretty cool. Everything's a lot tidier. You can see that uh, once again, in case anyone happens to be foxing around this video, where we are running an M130, not an M170. That's the Moto America legal Superbike ECU. It's going to go right there. And we do have here, this is a non-standard IMU. For our purposes, we use this for lean angle calculations and depending on what firmware we're using, it could be involved in other things, but this is basically an IMU and it has a calculated lean angle. So we may use that for strategy or uh, data purposes. Um, 
And then here you have, this is a Motec IGN4. As you can see, that's an ignition driver. LTC is Lambda to CAN. That's essentially what uh, reads data from our Lambda sensor in the rear. And when we go to the quad Lambdas in the front, that's gonna be two LCD2s, which is, uh, excuse me, LTCD, which is Lambda to CAN dual. Uh, and that'll allow us to run four Lambda sensors. Back here, you have this little block that just kind of has a lot of our key sensors and you can kind of see what goes where. This is rear speed sensor. This is gonna be suspension travel. This is rear brake pressure. And this I believe is our rain light. Yes. So that's uh, kind of how you can see all that works. It's designed to be really accessible in case we need to replace something in a hurry or remove something in a hurry. And uh, you can just pop one of these off really quickly and it's just that easy. And uh, since they're all color coded and keyed, it's impossible to screw those up. All right, so we are getting really close to the potential of firing this motorcycle. We're super excited. Um, and the next step is we're going to put on a proper Superbike specification fuel tank, and we'll show you that now. That's this guy here. This is completely aluminum. This was uh, basically a, a unit used by the factory team in the UK, and it's uh, got a lot of baffling inside. I, I think the capacity is 22 and a half liters. And um, the main benefit of this is obviously that it's lighter than a steel tank. It centralizes the weight lower and rearward, and uh, it's got a tremendous amount of baffling. So on brakes and acceleration, fuel is not just sloshing back and forth, causing you know potential imbalances or disruptions of the chassis. So we're gonna toss that on. And of course, there is a cover that goes over this, so you don't have these kind of like extreme geometric shapes once everything's put together. Um, so we're gonna pop that on. This is where our ECU is gonna go. After that, what we're gonna have to do is basically calibrate some sensors, uh, upload a new version of uh, firmware to the ECU, and then fingers crossed, it'll just fire right up. We'll have to see. All right, we've got the laptop hooked up and we're going to go ahead and give this thing a test fire and uh, hope for the best here. We've primed it a few times prior to turning on the camera, so everything should be all set. Okay, so we've gotten our first very brief handful of pulls. I basically have just done some very cursory mapping at uh, full throttle and, uh, you know, kind of just getting the thing running close because the, the mapping did need quite a bit of adjustment. And uh, I think, frankly, there's going to be a lot of work to be done here, which is typical. It's a new engine, essentially. And uh, so we're going to have to do some work to get some power out of this thing and, and get it to where I know it can be. And of course, we're going to build this motor. But for now, we've got a, a good baseline comparison and uh, we'll show you what we made. So, of course, this is uh, an SAE correction factor before we made 164.9. And uh, that was at uh, 11,600 RPM. 
now we are making 189 at 13 might as well say 13.6 and uh you know at the upper end of the rev range 13.7 where the bike is really restricted basically uh, falling on its face you can see at 13,700 rpm we've picked up 47 horsepower there um so we're not really sure how high we're gonna rev this thing right now we've got it revving pretty high um and i think we can rev it a bit higher we're gonna do, well, i'm gonna talk to some people that i have uh I have some relationships overseas that are racing this platform and we'll get some feedback on what they think but already we're seeing some pretty big results and this one obviously we started uh you know we started the, the run around 6,000 rpm let's see if we can find another one this one has a little more a few more revs in it not as not quite as high of a number but you can just see we've picked up a tremendous amount of power across the board here you know here it's uh 20 horsepower at 8,000 rpm and and the torque it looks really flat so i think uh especially once we get done mapping this thing it's going to be a pretty solid uh pretty solid close to 200 ish horsepower and i do want to point out that we have uh a brand new dunlop slick on here uh looks like a medium compound and you know as i've mentioned before putting slicks on these bikes on the dyno especially a fresh one like that it's kind of sticky especially when it gets hot it hurts the numbers they never make as much power so we may put a street tire on there like we had before just to get a more accurate comparison we've lost a few horsepower probably having that slick on but uh yeah this is where we are i think we're going to call this video for now we've got a lot of work to do and i wanted to pack all this content into one video so you guys could see what happens when we put this super bike ecu we haven't done any kind of cylinder tuning none of that good stuff that's all going to be later so just with a really rudimentary base ignition table and close enough fuel map we've picked up what uh 25 horsepower peak and almost 50 at the uh in the over rev area so that's gonna do it for this one i really appreciate you guys watching and uh, we appreciate all the comments and feedback even though some of you guys absolutely uh say the nastiest things i think i've ever read on the internet we really enjoy that stuff so keep it coming and uh we thank you for watching be sure to like this video and subscribe we'll see you the next time